Hey guys. So, welcome back. Hold on, let me see something. Welcome back to Tiff Talks 22, guys. So, the reason for this video today is so that we can discuss self-love, the components of it, why it's necessary, all the things, right? So, I had mentioned to you guys previously, I think on several different readings, I don't remember which all which ones because it's definitely been a lot of them. But, um, how y'all feeling? I hope y'all feel good. I woke up this morning feeling kind of, ugh, like the energy's weird, right? So I sat outside, listened to a few things, and I was like, oh, okay. There's something changing, so I may do a, a collective reading on that. But, uh, I don't want to stay in that energy. So I got myself together and was like moving forward, right? And I feel re-energized, my vibe is high, all the things. So yeah, I hope you guys are great. Um, but I wanted to talk about this because I have been seeing it and a friend of, a friend of mine and I, uh, probably a couple of them over the past few weeks recently, we've kind of been discussing how, what a difficult time, especially specifically in these relationships that people in general, uh, what I've been seeing a lot of is the females, the women, but people in general are having a really tough time like letting go of relationships or it's like it's like an ego thing really where their ego is so in the way um they are having a hard time like processing the feelings and emotions that come with what feels like rejection um when I feel like the reality is you need to switch your perspective about it. So many people want what they want when they want it, not even realizing that, okay, not only is it not time for you to have it, that shit ain't even good for you, right? <laughs> but then we have this tendency to romanticize um, the relationship, right? Like, oh, he was my one or she was my one. And knowing damn well, y'all fought 80% of the time. Like, were they your one? Is that what the hell you told? Two, two, two on the clock right now. Is that what the hell you told the universe you wanted? Yes, you did by your actions because that's what you're fighting for, right? Anyway, so I was just thinking and I was talking to my guides one day. Like, why is that? What is it that makes these women decide and men because we know it's it's been shown in men too um but but that makes us decide if i can't have you nobody can or uh, i posted a video on the community tab in youtube a few days ago where a lady she was essentially throwing an entire tantrum in the vehicle i think he was standing outside of the vehicle and recording her right like, she was flailing and crying, like, please don't leave me, Walter, you know, <laughs> like, I'm not trying to make fun of her, it was just, wow, and, and it made me think of, I'm sure he was recording it for his own protection, because those are the type of people that will scheme or plot or try to set you up, because you don't give them what they want or desire, 333 on the clock, and so I'm sure that's why he was recording it, but it made me think of something that I say a lot of times. When we react in a way that after the fact seems over the top or was like, oh my gosh, why did I do that? It like sometimes in the moment, if we could see ourselves, we probably wouldn't do some things, right? Especially when we react out of anger, right? And, and hostility. And it's like, if that was on camera and you were looking at that, you probably would be ashamed of you. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so I was asking my guys, like, why is that? And they brought it right back around to self-love, okay? I was going to make this a podcast episode. I don't know if I will or not anyway, um, because YouTube has a new feature. They are really trying to compete, and I am here for it, honey. Keep all my money in one place. My goodness. Anyway, so we're going to talk about the components of uh, self-love what they are, um, how you can minimize self-talk, and then what are some of the things you can do to increase or improve these things. I actually took a call yesterday, guys. I am on a platform called Premium Chat, 
And so you can call me, you can video call me or message me there and we will talk about whatever your issue is. So if you guys have a question or um, just need some type of guidance, I would prefer that you don't get like full readings there. Maybe a question or two would be ideal, but not to get full readings over there because, you know, I'm swipe typing as quickly as possible. And meanwhile, you know, your dime is running up. So I don't feel like it's like the most cost efficient way to contact me. Um, but hey, do you, right? <laughs> I welcome it. Okay. I'm definitely not trying to talk you out of it, but if you only have like one question, then that would be ideal. Anyway, um, so what are the components of self-love? And y'all know I don't have a teleprompter, so I take notes, I create outlines and all the things. So I'm going to look down and look up uh, occasionally. Um, but, and if you ask different people, right, they'll tell you like there's so, there are these many components or there are these many. It's not a set number because some of these words are just repeated in a different form, but they kind of mean the same thing. For example, uh, your self-esteem. Your self-esteem and your self-worth are very closely linked together. They're pretty much the same thing, right? Because your self-esteem is how you think and feel about yourself, right? How you value yourself, um, how you stand up for yourself or not, right? Um, or the things that you tell yourself that you deserve or don't deserve, right? And so what happens is over, uh, over a period of time, over a period of time, I think de dealing with certain aspects in life. And then some of these are things that we have certain aspects of certain experiences, right? That we've experienced, we've had in our lifetimes. And it's like, you keep getting knocked down. You keep getting knocked down. Eventually you start internalizing things, right? So if, if someone calls you stupid, long enough, right? What are the odds that you don't eventually start to believe I am stupid, right? So it's, that's just the way that that happens. However, when your self-esteem and your, your self-love are intact, not only are, um, is it easier for you to navigate these types of situations, these difficult situations? A lot of these situations, we wouldn't even put ourselves in, right? That's what one thing that I really say all the time. Like, once you realize just who you are, goosies, once you realize just who you are and how magnificent you are and how the divine views you and holds you in such high esteem, you won't be able to carry yourself in any way that contradicts that it's almost like um it's almost like my 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 father i'll say this this way for those of you who are religious right say if god is your father my father thinks so highly of me this is who i know i am Right? So this is how you go walk around with your head held high. That's what else I was noticing at the park yesterday. How many people walk, walk, just walk looking down. Why are you looking down? I'm like, either they're sad, they're depressed, or they have low self-esteem. That's just what I do, y'all. I be reading people's energy and stuff. But anyway, um, but yeah, I, I, people used to, and my sister was a big girl too, but people used to compliment my sister because she walked. You know what I mean? With her head held high. Big old boobs. But she walked like she was somebody. You know what I'm saying? When I walk into a room, and it's not even to put on an air. It's just like, I don't know how else to walk. Right? I can't walk like this. I can't. Because why? <laughs> like, you know? So pay attention to your what your body language says. But anyway, about, about what you believe about yourself. You know what I'm saying? So the self-esteem, the self-worth, that's a component of self-love. Also self-awareness, right? Because when you, I was thinking about this yesterday. First of all, when you know who the freak, y'all, 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 I be getting excited about this. Like I really be wanting to cuss sometimes. Like you got to know who the fuck you are, right? So when you know who you are, can't nobody tell you nothing about you. They might can give you tips or, or nothing. It won't be nothing that they can tell you that you're not already aware of. So this self-awareness comprises 
is comprised of being conscious of your actions, being conscious of your thoughts, um, being in touch with your emotions, aware of your emotions, right? Uh, for example, it's like, okay, I know that I can, I'm, I'm an analytical person, right? So before, and I still do it every now and then, before, um, I was really trusting of myself and what I saw and what I was interpreting, I would definitely get a lot of opinions, feedback, second, third opinions, right? Like, okay, so this just happened, right? Am I reading this wrong? Or did, should I take it that way? Now I just ask my guides. <laughs> now I just ask my guides. Um, every now and then, like, like if people message me, or inbox me, you know, like creepy men do. Uh, <laughs> not that all men are creepy, but some of the ones that be in my inbox, yeah, y'all creepy. Anyway, so I, you know, I can be kind of short to these people because my defenses are high and of, because of the certain type of person that I expect would come at you with this form letter kind of, you know what I'm saying, ladies, form letter kind of um, message here. So I can be kind of short. Like if it ain't about business, we'll cut it off real fast. And so I'll definitely message my friends like, was this rude? And my homegirl's like, no, nah, you know, it ain't, it ain't rude. I don't think it's rude, but like, I talk like that too, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like just really being aware of yourself as a person, but it's also being aware of who you are. Like, you know, you know what your moral standings are like, Oh no, honey, that is beneath me. So when people say things like, Oh, you think you're too good for that? I am. I am. And I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm proud to say that. Yes, I am too good to be doing crack, right? I'm too good to be doing this or like, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So self-awareness, it allows you to really be conscious of who you are. Um, it allows you to be conscious of your emotions and also to master your emotions. And that is super important when it comes to navigating new experiences or facing rejections, right? If it's, um, if you are, aware of where you flow on an emotional spectrum then certain things that occur to you it's like uh uh you know your triggers right you know your triggers you know what works for you you know what what, what doesn't work for you so self awareness is cr critical especially to to healing right to your healing to your improvement or your ascension is super important to be able to control your emotions so that your emotions don't control you, right? So you're not running a, a young man over because he walked away from you. I watched a video about that yesterday. Uh, uh, yeah, it actually turned out to be a really sad situation because my thought was this man was so kind and so nice. He was essentially being emotionally um, manipulated and abused by this young lady and so when he finally tried to walk away from her she literally ran him over with her car and back back over him and cock and it cost him his life um so while it was like yeah she was the bad actor because she definitely had some imbalances going on it's like why is this a situation that you didn't get out of sooner what is it about you that felt like you didn't deserve better and that's always my theory on a lot of these, um, my, not my theory, my question is, it's my analysis. Like I wish that they knew their worth. I wish they knew what they deserved. Right. So anyway, self-esteem, self-awareness. We also have self-acceptance. Okay. So this is, I know this is something that a lot of people struggle with, right? Um, even me and, and please don't get it twisted, right? I'm where I'm at today because I grew aware of these things that I was lacking and what triggered that was my feel. Well, I already kind of had, had some of these things intact, but what triggered it like in a major way was going through the heartbreak that I went through about a few years ago where it was like, wait a minute now where I felt like it was really time for me to look at these things and see why this felt like a, a repetitive cycle in these connections. Then it was like, what, 
why are you not loving yourself? You deserve better than this or you deserve better than that because you had put yourself in this position previously. So why did you put yourself in this position previously? Because you were not, you were in a space where you weren't loving yourself. You were in a space where you didn't like Tiffany. You were in a space where you weren't proud of Tiffany. You weren't in, you know what I mean? So I had to go through all these things and spirit, spirit was just really, really, really pouring into me. Um, through a lot of other people, through tarot readings, through channeled messages, right? 15, 15 on the clock. And, and I was like, yeah, I am the shit. You're right. <laughs> it ain't like it took a whole lot for them to convince me. But, you know, I had to, get, had to snap myself out of some things. You know what I'm saying? So don't, don't, please don't think that this is where I've always been because it, it, I haven't. Um, and it's definitely something that wavers, but once you become aware of it and you resolve to fix it, to change it, to improve it, please know that it is very, very possible. And it's something that you're able to do. Okay. So self-acceptance is being proud of yourself. However it is that you come, it, I feel like it's an energy of accepting yourself flaws and all. And when I say flaws, I mean what people perceive as flaws. It's like, um, this is not my experience, but it's just an example. Like, okay, yeah, I got that one short tooth. I'm going to either get it fixed, but until I'm a, I'm a, I, could, I could get it fixed or I may get it fixed. But it's like, in the meantime, I just got that short tooth. And what? I'm still cute, right? <laughs> These things. It's the things like that. So it's acceptance of your appearance. It's, it's being proud of your sexuality. Um, accepting that your hair color is this way or your, your hair um texture is this way right it's like this is who i am this is how i present myself to the world to the public take it or leave it and if you decide to leave it i really don't give a damn your loss right so self acceptance is is that's why i say it's so important too to be so confident especially in if you are in the public or you're in the spotlight or you, you have a, um, a critical eye on you all the time. Um, like, you know, things, things, words do hurt. They can hurt. They have the potential to hurt. However, when these things that I'm talking about today are intact within you, it's like, girl, please. I had, I had some, some people say, I say some people, a person very close to me say some things one day and it was intentionally to hurt me or to tear me down. I just laughed at her, literally. And this is someone older than me. I laughed at her. I said, now that's one thing you'll never be able to say about me. You'll never be able to call me ugly. <laughs> and you'll never be able to call me dumb or stupid or unintelligent because I know how brilliant I am. And I know no matter if I'm fat or skinny, I'm gorgeous. So the things you trying to say to me right now where you crit criticizing, criticizing, criticizing and judging, I know that that's completely reflective of how you view yourself because everything I feel about me is amazing. So she stopped that nitpicking shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, she is she didn't stop. She she keep it to herself now, probably, because I still see some things. But hey, still not my freaking issue. All right. So just really knowing who you are, accepting who you are. This is me. Uh, this is my inner inner my fat pocket on my inner thigh. This is my chubby arm, right? And and uh, as I work out, it may change. If I don't. If I do work out and it don't change, it is what the freak it is. Okay? I'm comfortable with Tiffany. I'm comfortable with me. So you can't shake that. The words that you say cannot shake that. But there was a time when that was not the truth. Okay? You also have... I know, I keep saying that. I'm going to tell you how to fix it, how to change it, how to improve it. Um, so there's, we have self-acceptance. Next, we have self-confidence, right? So self-confidence is important because, again, it affects how you carry yourself, how you present yourself, and in turn, it's going to affect how people treat you, but also it affects your ability to start new things or to have new experiences, right? And when you have these new experiences and you do things that are new to you, 
and and learn different things not only does your confidence increase so your whole overall life experience improves but it makes it less likely that you would get stuck or stagnant because you won't be afraid or fearful of starting new things of stepping outside of your comfort zone um what do i want to say about that so yeah so self-confidence is all about believing in yourself it's all about believing in your abilities um believing in your the ideas that you have right um and not dimming your light in order to fit in out of fear that either you'll be judged or it'll be stupid or, you know, it's having the confidence to stand out. And don't get it twisted, right? You can still be a quiet person or a shy person. This doesn't mean you have to be in the spotlight. It just means you can be a quiet and shy person and still be hella confident in you. Okay, let me give you an example. This wasn't one that, that there was shying away though. But my son, my son is, uh, his dad is like black and Puerto Rican. And so his hair plus my hair with the Indian and the, all these people <laughs> in the background of our heritage, he has that really fine curly hair, right? And so um, it's like when I take him to the black barber, they tend to either cut off too much or edge him up where his line is such, it's almost like a wound, right? But then when I take him to the white barber, they cut his hair like a white person. So it's kind of like a fine in between. So I'll get his hair cut with at the black barber. And then over time, it's like, well, you don't need a full cut yet. So I was like, forget it. Let me just do it, right? Let me just cut it. So I already washed his hair and everything. Um, yeah. So um, I washed his hair, dried his hair, treated his scalp because he also has psoriasis. Um, and then I was like, I'm going to trim a little bit of it off, right? But hair, hair is so delicate and, and it can be such a... a like you one snip away. I just saw two, two, one, one on the clock. You one snip away from plugging a kid, right? It's easy, easy, easy to do. So while I was nervous about it, I also was like, you know what? God, my hands, God, my hands ancestors help me out here. And his hair looked so good when I was done. And as I was doing it, I was just like, hey, your mama can do anything i am freaking unstoppable i actually posted a picture of him uh on my personal page on facebook or whatever because i was like i'm proud of myself however had my self-confidence not been intact i would not have even attempted to try right but i'm also an artist right i i have that eye and so I draw, I sing, the creative in me is all of these things. And so, and I look, I look at lines, I can't, yeah. So I felt like I was really confident that I would be able to do it. And as I did it, I was like, yeah, I feel like my ass could do anything, right? I'm the one that, <laughs> I'm the one that uh, my, my sister used to call, like, come put this furniture together, right? Because, you know, everybody ain't they forte. Um, her, my mom, everybody, like. I'm that one to to do these things, whether it's putting a computer together or putting a desk together, right? That that's who I am. And and it just is a confidence boost. Like I'm I don't go into too many things with the belief that I ain't gonna be able to do this, right? Um Yeah, that's just it. So I if if there is one thing, it's like, okay, if anybody can do it, shh, Tiffany, it's you, it's you, right? So that's super important too for your, for your self-worth, your self-confidence, your self-esteem, your self-love, right? It's believing 
that you are capable and that can be knocked out of tact when what when we go through something where we feel like we failed or when we go through something that didn't turn out the way that we expected it to or when we go through something and we have to take a detour and when we had plans to go in this straight direction right life is full of detours so when your confidence is intact it's like okay i'm gonna still get there i'm gonna just go this long way right trust me been there, done that too. Um, so another aspect of it is self-compassion, which is what I was just thinking about. So it's neat that it's the next on the list. It's like when you do have these perceived failures in, in life about certain things, there's going to be a need for you to be accepting, for you to be kind, for you to be forgiving, um... For you to trust that, okay, this happened, but, right? Um, and and it, it kind of fuels your emotional resilience when you're able to look at yourself like, dang, I made a mistake on that. But it's okay, because I'm still amazing. People make mistakes. I am still human, even though I'm a spiritual being. This is a human experience. So that's part of it. I could stay feeling defeated or I could get back up, right? So when you are able to look at yourself with the same compassion, it's like, you know, look, well, I'm going I'm to put that at the end. It's, it's like, look at yourself with the same compassion that you would if it were someone else, all right? So the, uh, the next aspect of self-love is self-respect. So... Listen, your girl has done, you know, I went to college. <laughs> I ain't finished, but I, w I kicked it, you know. Your girl has done many things in her life and lifespan where it was like, you should be ashamed of yourself, right? <laughs> but, you know, whether I should or not is up for debate. But, like, my moral standings, my values, how I feel about myself or what I know was good or bad for me, right? Um, <laughs> it's like, have you no respect, right? And at the time, a lot of, through a lot of these circumstances and situations, no, I did not. Right. I did not have it. So self-respect allows you to make choices and to complete the actions that honor your soul, that you could be proud of, that promote dignity in you. OK. I could tell y'all some things, but I think y'all understand. <laughs> I think y'all understand where I'm coming from when I say that, okay? Self-respect. And it is super important because when people see you hold yourself in a high regard, this is very important. When when people see you hold yourself in a high regard, they, I don't know if it's fear or they just wouldn't dare try to treat you in a way that is less than that, Right? Where it's like, um, I have this saying, um, pages don't typically approach empresses, right? So when you're in this esteem where you're carrying yourself like a queen, you're not going to have a jester come up and say, what's up, baby? No, because <laughs> they're going to be like, oh, that queen is out of my league, right? So as you begin to get this confidence, this self-confidence, um, and you grow in the way that you carry yourself and the way you are honoring yourself and treating yourself, the type of people that could, that are drawn to you is going to change. Okay. What I noticed for myself personally was that certain people stopped approaching me and I was good with that. Like I was good with that. <laughs> I was good with that because people can look and recognize, oh, out of my league. You're right. Get your peasant ass. <laughs> anyway, so self-respect, it definitely is something that's valuable, but, but it also keeps you from making choices or taking actions that 
you know, are going to have you feeling guilty or shame when you are so, when you, when you get sober or the next day when that person leaves, right? So self-respect is super vital to self-love and it's directly reflective of it. Okay. Or the lack of it. All right. Then uh, last but not least, we have empathy. And empathy and self-compassion are very closely related, right? Because I feel like compassion is being able to show this kindness to yourself, um, show this acceptance to yourself, also forgiving yourself. Empathy is the ability to see yourself with that, in, with that compassionate energy and to appreciate yourself through certain circumstances. Like... Um, we often give, what I was going to say a little earlier, we often give our friends, our family, and other people that we associate with, we give them, um, mu we show them much more compassion and empathy than we do towards ourselves. Um, oftentimes, right? Where it's like, oh, uh, I'm so sorry you're going through that, right? But then... On ourselves, we'll be like, oh, I effed up again. I can't believe I was dumb enough to fall for that, right? But your friend, when your friend is telling you about a similar experience, you're like, oh, no. Like, why are we like that? <laughs> why are we like that? Like, the same courtesy of kindness and forgiveness and compassion that we would be able to extend to other people, be willing to be as forgiving and understanding of yourselves, right? Um, also, I feel empathy is being able to place yourself in that person's shoes. And so that's exactly what I mean. But a lot of times we don't look at ourselves like that. We look at ourselves with that judgment, with that harsh critique. And that's often because there's someone in our lives who has projected that on us. It is like a uh, root sacral and solar plexus chakra it's those y'all those first three chakras they govern everything and they start to develop very early in our lives so take a look at the type of people around you did you have parents who encouraged you to do new things or did you have overprotective parents that were afraid of every little boogeyman around the corner for you so you never got to experience new things or if you did someone was holding your hand or um, did you have someone who was super critical, like, uh, what the church family going to say, or what the people going to say about this, right? So if you grew up in that kind of environment, then you're likely going to be an adult who's always thinking about what is someone else thinking about me, right? So it's just really having an understanding of yourself. So self-love, guys, is made of self-esteem, self-awareness, self-acceptance, self-confidence, self-compassion, self-respect, and empathy. All of these things create how you love on you. And it's, it's also, of course, you know, when these things are intact, it's like feeling free to take a shower, feeling free to treat yourself to something nice, right? A nice dinner or a nice piece of jewelry or um, taking care of yourself, putting effort into your appearance every day, right? Those, those become a given because of all of these other emotional aspects of it that are intact. It's like when you love something, you're going to carry it in the energy of love, you're going to put effort into taking care of it, right? You're going to, you're going to want to work out more. You're going to want to, uh, fix your hair. You're going to want to, right? So it's all like connected. It's all connected. And none of us are better than the other because we have it and the others don't at this time because it all kind of fluctuates as well. Some of us learn early. Some of us don't. And But then when you do and you make the changes, hey, that's all that's important, right? So ways to move around this type of thing is to minimize negative self-talk. Um, so this is how, like... This is what I did to fix that, okay? To fix the way that I would talk to myself negatively. That could either either be really criticizing your appearance um, or it could be criticizing the actions or it could be just thinking the worst like, oh, I'm going to F that up, right? So when you find yourself 
saying negative things to to you. And I've made a post about this yesterday, actually. Did I share it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. Um, but the first note is to catch your critic, right? So when you realize, okay, I just said something ugly about me. Or I just said something... Um, say if you are a worry ward and you say, oh, that's probably going to go badly. First of all, your words have power. So once you realize that, you'll be... Even if it's a thought, it's a word, okay? Once you realize that, you're going to be more conscious of the way that you speak anyway and the things that you say. But then, the things that you say to yourself, catch your critic. It's like, oh, what did I just say to me? So now that you see, okay, I just said something that was not okay. So ask yourself, is it real? Is it the truth or not? I did post this yesterday in a reel, I think. So if it's not the truth, first of all, ask yourself, why are you saying it? Okay? If it's not the truth about you. That's why I was thinking about that song, Eminem song. I am whatever you say I am. But if I wasn't, then why would you say I am? So, like, I don't even remember the other lyrics of it. But I can't even, can't even, like, repeat that hook. Because, no, I am not what you say I am. I am what I say I am. Right? So I'm not even repeating that hook because why? I strongly believe that words have power. Okay? So catch your critic. Ask yourself, was this a real truth? Is this something that is fact or not? And likely it is not. Right? Um, so what I would do then, say I'm saying, oh, I am so dumb. Right? That's why I don't say, oh, I'm dead. When I find something funny. No, that's hilarious, right? Well, I'm not dead. <laughs> like, I'm very much alive. So why am I going to continue to repeat that I am dead? Anyway, I digress. Uh, so, um, yo, so catch your critic, right? Oh, that is so, I am so dumb, right? So ask yourself, are you dumb? Is that the truth? No, it's not. So why do you continue to tell yourself that? Why do you continue to tell yourself that? So shift the pers your perspective on the statement that you made um, and even take the time especially if this is something that you have a real problem with take the time to rephrase what you just said right and I and I use this actually to apply it to most things that I say or think of that are negative not just when I'm talking about myself okay so it could be like oh this is gonna go I, I see this going horribly wrong right and unless I have intuitive insight about a situation first of all then yeah I, I will say that like yeah this is true I know this is going to happen because I saw it in the cards or my guides showed this to me right and even when they show me certain things um, like they've shown me certain things about certain family members in the future it's like I don't even want to manifest it so I'm aware that there's potential for this to, to take place or to unfold in the future but I don't want to manifest it so I don't say it, right? I've probably told a couple of friends, but um, it's not something that I want to put a true value or weight on. So anyway, whatever this harsh criticism is, this negative thing is, or I look so fat, right? No, I'm so grateful for my body. I look so good, right? Rephrase the statement that is not the truth to make it truth, right? And then... Even if you hadn't said the negative thing out loud, this phrase that you reframed to make positive, say it out loud. Something that I started doing was um, whenever I speak, because negative negative words and statements and sentences have such a, such a powerful effect, I would rephrase the negative statement with three positive statements, right? So it could be the repetition of the truth in a positive way, repeat it three times, or like for what, if I say one negative thing about myself, like say, ugh, my skin is so bad. Then I'm going to say, oh, my hair is beautiful. I love my boobs. Or my curves look good today. And, you know, <laughs> like I'm, go I'm going to find three positives to combat the energy of that negative statement. 
like it is practice guys it is practice and it takes practice especially if you're still building where you're growing in self-love in any of the selves that we just talked about right it is practice but if it's something that you're serious about improving i feel like it's practice that you're going to be willing to put in um and something else that was a major help to me is affirmations. So you literally train yourself to be positive, to think positively about yourself, but also about life where you really intentionally make it a practice to shift your perspective, right? Um, so then it becomes second nature and it doesn't feel like a practice at all, all right? So um, I just touched on that, affirmations. There are... Self-confidence, self-worth, self-love. There are all types of affirmations that are been, have been recorded by all different types of voices, um, all different types of accents, all different uh, age ranges, right? Intensities, um, enunciations, right? Because I have this thing, y'all. If you, if you are talking into the mic and I hear like... Gross. <laughs> like, oh, you're not my provider. I can't, I can't do, I can't do it. I can't, I ain't gonna be able to listen to you if it sounds like ASMR, right? No, because all I'm listening to is like, all I'm thinking is get your ass out the mic. <laughs> I know, but that's my thing. But it's okay because you have so many different people and choices to choose from. Also, um, if you don't even want to choose, you what you really can do is um make your own and and that's easier than it sounds right but um take note of the things that you tell yourself that are negative and literally write the opposite statement write it in a positive write write it in a positive way right like i am so dumb no i am so smart i am so intelligent i am right change the way that you speak to you and you can create your own list. And I feel like that's a really good way to go as well. Because then it has the power of your intentions behind it, right? It's it's personal in a way. Whereas when you're just repeating other people's, it's like it can be personal. But it can also really feel like you're lying to yourself. That's another thing too. Even if these statements are not true at the time when you start, which most likely they are not. Um, don't allow that to make you feel any differently like keep going keep going because eventually your mind your body believes what you tell it so eventually your subconscious it'll just become second nature and you'll notice the change in yourself right where it's like damn i must do believe on the shit yes yes i do right <laughs> these things so so start there with affirmations also learn to assert yourself Assertion and aggression are not the same things. Um, when there is often aggression behind it. Uh, yeah, that's a deeper rooted heal healing issue. But assertion is having the confidence and trusting your voice enough to stand up on your own behalf. Right? So it's like... I was actually talking to someone, I think they commented on one of my posts on IG about her mother. And I shared my experience with my mother where it's like, okay, she make these little digs and I'd be like, okay, I'm going to just, it's passive aggressive is what it is. And I was just, okay, I'm going to the room. I'm going to just get out of here or I'm going to just hang up. We're just going to end this phone call, these types of things. But I did that one day, probably been about a year now. And I was, and I can't, and I walked away and I was like, no, cause now I'm in, I'm in here mad. <laughs> I'm in here four, three, three, three on the clock. I'm in here mad and angry and I was vibing high. So now let me give her her shit back <laughs> and, and get this out in the open and also improve our relationship at this, at the time, at the time. So that was being assertive because I had to go back in there and say, you know what? You just said this, this, and this. I don't like that you say things like this. And when you do, this is what it does to our connection or this is what it does to me. 
and it's not fair because it's not true. It's not reflective of, right? We just had this whole little conversation. And, and, and it's not allowed. It's not acceptable, right? And that was the end of it. And then I didn't feel that anger that I felt. I stood up for myself. I let, you, let this person know what it was um, as far as what I thought was important for me. And I didn't internalize whatever. I don't even remember what it was that was being said. But I just remember taking the action to do this to fix it. And I feel like it's, it, it made her more self-aware. Right? Definitely seen some improvements in our connection in that regard. Um, something else that you can do to pull your self-love or uh, increase your self-love um, is to do things that you enjoy, right? Uh, I'm in a household where people don't enjoy being outside or getting out to, into nature. So it's like, okay, I love it. So bye, right? And I still got to go. I got to go to the lake. I got to go and I go by myself. And I, feel, I, I be feeling like, okay, that's how God intended it anyway. But lately they've been uh, going and, and joining me on that journey. So that's been pretty cool. But like do things that nurture your soul, right? That make you happy. Okay. As long as they are not harmful in any way. Uh, also act confident even when you don't feel it. Like I said previously, your mind, your body, your subconscious believes what you tell it. Okay, so some people would be like, oh, that's fake. That's not authentic. Um, no, it's healing. <laughs> it's, and I'm not saying for you to pretend to be. No, it's like face a fear. You can feel the fear, acknowledge the fear, but resolve to do it anyway. Right? So that's what I mean when I say act confident even when you don't feel it. Um, the next one is try something new. This is a sacral chakra wound as well or a root chakra one of the two um a fear a fear of trying new things right when you are able to try new things like i said it helps you to to know yourself to develop a broader understanding is it's definitely a part of the self-discovery here and then you realize like dang i've never done that before and i did it like what else can i do right it allows you to really get in touch with things that that excite you explore new interests and develop new interests and grow in that regard um I, I i i saw a statement previously i don't know who said it but um i know my guides have definitely told me that that show me it in readings that thing that you fear the most your gift is likely hiding behind that right so if you are afraid to try new things and you force yourself to have these new experiences, maybe that's part of what you were meant to do, part of your soul purpose anyway, right? Maybe you were meant to be the person who encourages other people to try new things. How? Not like, let me tell you to go do this, right? But maybe you um, are meant to share this experience and, and you could be like a blogger or a travel blogger or something like that. Share this experience. Share it with people, which is going to encourage them to do the same. Um, and that's just like even with this um, spiritual teaching, right? We And the spiritual community, you've heard this phrase a million times because I feel like spirit tells a lot of us this, right? Um, the more you are yourself and you speak out and you share your truths, it encourages and empowers other people to do the same. Even if you don't directly tell them, hey, you tell your story. No, but they'll remember and they'll think, okay, Tiffany was brave enough to do that. I'm going to try it too, right? Or let me tell let me tell my experience with this thing, right? So be, be willing to try new things or have new experiences. Something that I learned or realized about myself as I, was, as I was going on this journey, even though I never looked at myself as a fearful person at all, um, I was going to go on a trip. I think I told you guys this in a previous video. I was going to go on a trip to the woods. And I had like a brand new car. Like there was no reason why it should have been an issue. It was a gorgeous little place I had rented, a little cabin thing in the woods. There's no no reason why I should have been fearful or afraid. 
But when it came time to go, all this energy was project, projected onto me. Like, you sure? Y'all be careful. That you, you. And I'm like, dang, why do I feel so anxious all of a sudden? First of all, it's only like 100 miles. <laughs> But then, like, what? Are, the car is in tip-top shape. Like, what the hell am I afraid of? Then I realized, oh, it's not my fear. It's someone else's fear. That's just like, um... My mom in the pool. I love water. I love water. I love water, right? I can't even swim, y'all. That does not stop me from getting in the damn pool, okay? Um, I definitely had an experience as a child where I almost drowned. I was like third grade, I think. And so that kind of created some fear, I think, for me and my my caregivers or whatever. Um, but I'm not afraid to be in the water. I don't like to put my head under the water unless I'm like I'm in the shower. But uh, but I get my ass in there like I'm like I'm a can swim. Okay. Anyway, and so you know, my children, we in the pool. I don't have a problem with it at all. However, my mom is like, uh, no, you don't even need to sit by the water. What? By the pool. Like, <laughs> what? You're not that scared. The other day we were at the lake. There's a dock. There are two benches out there on the dock underneath these little awnings. She wouldn't even go over there. And it's so stable. It's not one of those rocking docks. Like when you walk out, you know, like there's one at the big lake that just goes straight out. It's a big T, but it's so much water. I, I, I can see how it's definitely intimidating. Like I went to stand out there one day and I was like, okay, I'm going to go and sit down. Like I had to sit down out there because it's like, okay, I see how this could be like, whoa, dizzying, right? But this one at the smaller lake that we were at, it's, it's a really big platform uh, on a small lake, a small body of water, and it's got railings all around. It's super secure. She was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So definitely, I, I peeped that long ago, her sacral chakra. This is definitely someone who values and loves routine, but what does that do? That keeps you stuck. So bottom line is, don't be afraid to try something new. Force yourself to do it. Um, even with new foods, it's like, an act of God to get some people to try new foods, right? <laughs> Don't be that person, okay? And in certain certain situations, y'all have heard me say, you can see or see them as your example of what it is that you don't want for yourself. So me and my analytical energy can see, oh, this person is so stuck. So then I'm looking like, this is from this, this is from that, this is from that. This is not what I want for myself, so I'm going to do something completely different, right? Five, two, two, two on the clock. Fives are all about change, transformation. Twos, of course, partnerships, duality, right? So be willing, being able to try new things allows you to, you know, experience reasonable risk without an excessive amount of fear, okay? Fear keeps you stuck, stagnant, and holds you back. All right. You also have to be kind to yourself. We already talked about that, but definitely try to incorporate that. Also, focus on the positives and that those affirmations are going to do that and allow that for you. And also be very mindful of the type of people that you spend time with or spend time around. Right. If you are with someone whose vibrations are very low all the time or they're always critical or judgmental or negative or thinking the worst, right? Especially if you're sensitive like me, that shit can permeate the energy of the room. So now here I have to go into my visualizations <laughs> and overpower your negative energy, right? And it is an effort. It is hard work, trust me, um, to, to do that. And then often what happens is if you're around negative people or people that don't inspire you, you dim, your light slowly dims or your energy is slowly drained, right? Um, it's that classic narcissist and the empath pairing that takes place. Um, say you're in a relationship 
and you are the light. You are the empath, right? And this person is a narcissist where it's like, okay, I thought this was love, but this shit is draining over a period of time where you slowly start to lose your light. That's because you cannot fight this negative energy 24-7 and expect to maintain your vibration, right? So if you're in that environment, that's it's going to be super important that you get outside in the connection if you have to or, well, you have to, right? Or at least create some boundaries where y'all not in the same house, or you don't you don't communicate with this person on a regular, right? It definitely has to be some changes with the people that are around you. Because stuck people are going to pull on people who are trying to make progress. Because stuck people don't want to see you succeed or expand beyond them. Because it's not what they're doing or what they would do. Okay? And hey, I'm preaching to myself as I'm preaching to you and I hope I'm not preaching I'm just talking but anyway so guys self love self love self love all the things I hope this video was helpful I really enjoyed making it I didn't expect that it would be this long um but I should have known honey because it's something that I've worked on not the video the content of it in my life personally for some time now and um yeah, I'm super happy with what how I've grown, okay? I know that there is more to do as far as that that goes, but I'm super proud of my progress and I wish the same for you. Bye.